You know, for the visitors here, once a month, members of the congregation take times about preaching, just happened to be my time. I ain't no preacher, but if y'all come back next week, you'll hear a real preacher and a good one too. You know, when it comes to my time to preach, I ain't never got a problem with what I'm going to say because I've been ciphering on it for weeks riding down the road. Well, this time, I just, I'm telling you, I was at a dead loss. And I, I couldn't come up with nothing when my name come up on the list to preach. And in class, Gene Alamel said something. Gene's kind of like E.F. Hutton. He don't say much, but when he does, you need to listen to him. He said, ball it up in one wad, love. I said, there you go. That's what I'm going to preach on, love. I said, it'll be easy. Ain't going to be no problem. I'll go through there and get some scriptures. I'll just ease right through that. People will like it, and it'll be okay. That ain't even close, people. I'm going to tell you what. I thought prayer was one of my hardest things to wrap my head around in this Bible. Love runs it a close second. It is deep as a well on a mountain. I'm telling you, it's deep. <clears throat> There's three kinds of loves. I ain't going to get into all of them, but y'all can cipher it out when we start reading the scriptures. One is love like when you get married. Another one is like you might like something. Auburn, Alabama. The other one is kind of like you might be commanded to love. That, that, that type of love. Over in Leviticus, old Moses, is he's got himself between a rock and a hard place. They wanted him, God wanted him to take the children out of Israel and lead them to the promised land, and he didn't want to do it. Told him he didn't want to, but he had to anyway. And they are griping and a grumbling. Now, don't say much about them fighting each other. It just says they're mad with God. But you know if they're mad and fighting, they, they're fighting each other. And so Moses tells them, look, y'all got to love each other just like you love yourself. I, that's pretty easy to read. But I'm going to tell you what, if you stop and cipher that out, that's pretty strong. And it's going to get worse as we go along. Love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. I'm telling you, son, that's strong. Well, I think that Moses is only talking about the people right there in that bunch. I don't think he's talking about people in another country right now. I don't. And then over there in, in, in Deuteronomy, God tells Moses, I want a covenant with these people. And so Moses goes out there, they still are fighting and they still are squabbling. In fact, we know that they all of them ain't even going to get over her. But he tells them, if y'all are going to make it, you've got to love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your might. I don't know anything else is left to love God with. That's a heap of love. That's as strong as you're going to get to love somebody. And we've got to love God that much. In Romans, <clears throat> Paul is talking to them about the law. They're questioning Paul about the law. And Paul tells them, he said, Look, y'all got to do what the law says. If they say you got to pay taxes, you got to pay taxes. If you run a red light, you got to pay a fine. You got to do everything the law says. But, if y'all will love one another, y'all ain't going to have no more problems. Love is the answer. Now, I don't like to read a whole lot while I'm up here, but I got to read this. John 3. I'm going to read it to you. We know that we have passed from death to life. That's when they was on the bad side and now they're on the light side. <clears throat> from death to life because, this is why they did it, because we love the brethren. Now if you love each other, you're going to do what's right. He does not, it says, he who does not love his brother abides 
in death. Now let me tell you, y'all are brothers. Not only y'all, but up yonder somewhere else in Vestavia. It says, whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Now this is where it gets strong. But this we know, love, because... Why do we know love? Talking about Jesus. Because he laid his life down for us. That's how we know love. You can't know it no stronger than that. It wasn't somebody just jumped up and gave her life. This was premeditated for a long time ago. Jesus did that for us. And here's the good part. And we also ought to be able to lay our life down for our brother. Pretty stout, ain't it? To think that you go lay your life down for your brother. I'm telling you, this, this love is <laughs> it, it's strong. Well, in Corinthians, I done told y'all what love is. Let me just tell you. I don't know how to explain love, but I will tell you this, and I can explain it to some of y'all. Some of y'all ain't qualified to know, but if y'all got grandkids, you know what love is. I guarantee you. <clears throat> this is what love ain't. Love ain't envy. If you always are wanting something that you ain't got, you envy things. If you always are wanting something somebody else has got, that's envy. And God knows that he wants us to progress and do good because he gave the parable about the talents. But he don't want this thing envy to get so bad that it gets in front of everything else. We need to be satisfied with what we got. Pride. People that think they're somebody. You know, people that's maybe got a little money or people that's got something or whatever or just maybe an attitude to think they're better than everybody else. We all the same people, and he gives all kind of examples about the poor man coming into church and all that. We know that. You can't have pride. If you got pride, you're in trouble. Pride and puffed up, I think they're pretty, pretty much the same. Rude. You can't be rude to people. You know, we had in a Howard's class the other day, he said you can say things without saying things. You know, somebody says something, you just give them a little snarl on your face or turn and walk away or something like that. I saw that last night, in fact, at my house. Anyway, <clears throat> rude. You can't be rude. You can't be selfish, always thinking about yourself, always. You ain't worried about nobody else. You got something on your mind and you want, you want, you want it. You can't think about evil things. I'm going to tell you what, it ain't hard not to think about evil things, but it sure is easy to. And you've got to be careful or you'll be thinking about something you ain't got no business thinking about. Don't be provoked. Now, I'm working on that, but don't be provoked. In other words, if somebody says something to you, don't jump off the handle. Don't do that. 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, Paul is talking to them, and this is what he says. He tells them all kind of things that they got to do and all kind of things they got to have. And he says, this is three things you got to have. You got to have faith. And you got to have hope. And then he says, you got to have love. We know what faith is. Faith is when you are hunting something that you don't, you ain't never seen. You just hope it's there. That's faith. It's when you believe something that you ain't seen. Hope is when you hope something comes up that you know is real. Like you lose a dollar. You hope you find it. Same thing about spiritual problems with hope. And then we done talked about love and he said, let me tell you. Out of, out of these three things, love is number one. It's better than faith, and it's better than hope. Would you have ever thought that? I wouldn't. And then we get into Ephesians. Wives and husbands. 
That's a good one. It says, for a man to love his wife just like he loves himself and a woman to love his husband, love her husband just like she loves herself. Well, I can tell you that men love their self. I'm an expert on that because I've been one a long time. I don't know diddle and squat about women, but I do about men. I'm going to tell you what we do. We'll get up in the morning and we'll go to the gym and we'll work out. We'll strain and we'll sweat and we'll torture ourselves. We will because we want to look good. We love ourselves. We'll run. We'll get out there and run up and down the road or around the track or ride a bicycle. And I got to tell you all this. Uh, <clears throat> me and Scott Junkin live in the same neighborhood. And I went out one morning and I got in my, I got a big old Dodge diesel truck with a Cummins engine in it, three-quarter ton, four-wheel drive. It's a big one. I fired that thing up and I started down the road. And there was Scott, a running. He ain't got no idea nobody's in the world but him. Got them earphones on. I'm expecting he's listening to all kind of rock and roll music. He's a running. And I thought I'll ease up behind him and beep the horn. It'll be funny. Well, I did. I eased up behind him. And I blew that horn. And Scott Junkin ain't only a runner. He's a high jumper. And I'll tell you, chameleon lizards ain't got nothing on him because he changed colors. <laughs> it really did. But anyway, we love ourselves. Now, women love herself too. They'll go to the store and they'll buy them a blouse and then they'll look down and, why, the shoes ain't the right color. You can't wear them with that. They got to look good. And they got enough makeup to color four or five clowns in the bathroom. <clears throat> They do, and when we get ready to go somewhere, you know, it's, uh, are you ready? In a minute, and we do that. Well, I'm going to give you all a scenario. I learned that word in the fire department. Let's say a fella comes home on a Friday, and he's tired, but he's got his day planned for tomorrow. He's going to go play golf or hunt or fish or whatever it is, and he sits down in his easy chair, and his wife comes in, and she looks up, and she says, Honey, you know what? We don't want to hear that word. Do you know what? And he says, What? And she says, We've got to paint this room. My family's are coming next week. We've got to get it done. And we've got to get some furniture, too. Why? Well, it ain't going to go with the color we're going to paint. So he says, okay, honey. And he says, I'll go in the morning and I'll buy the paint and you find out what kind of furniture and I'll take care of it. That's love. Now that is. That's love. And then the wife, to put it on the other hand, he comes in and <clears throat> I've kind of lost my train of thought. You know how it is when you start talking about women. <laughs> she, <laughs> well, I will tell you this part of this story. What I did for my wife, my wife bought a mantle, and she wanted it put up. It was an old mantle. She'd bought it, tore up, wanted me to fix it and put it up. I took it to the barn, and I took it apart, and I fixed it, and I not only fixed it, I painted it, and me and Doodle, toted it up there and put it in up against the profile of the fireplace there. And she was happy she could be. Now, I did that for her. Although the mantle had been in the garage four years. And what prompted me to do it, she brought a picture home of one she'd found for $300. I figured I could fix that one. <laughs> well, men and women love their self. They do. And when you start, start thinking about we love each other as much as we love our own self, that's strong because we love ourself. And we've got to love God more than that. I got one last thing here I want to tell you. <clears throat> uh, this, is, this is what love is. Paul says in Corinthians, 
if you could do anything you wanted to do, you could walk out here and you could tell Double Oak Mountain, I want you to be flat, and Double Oak Mountain just flattens right out. If you could do that, if you had the power to do that, if you could feed every human being in the world that was poor, you had the power to do that. Or let's say that you could be any kind of thing you want. You could be a football player, basketball player, the greatest boxer in the world. You could be that. You could do anything. You talk in tongues, all kind of tongues, in fact. Talk to angels. Talk Japanese, Chinese. Prophesy. Talk about things that was going to happen next week. I mean, you could virtually do anything you wanted to do. Paul says it ain't worth a dime without love. That's pretty strong, ain't it? That's pretty strong. Now, I don't know how much y'all love. I don't know sometimes how to love. I really don't. I question myself about loving people I don't know good. I just got a, I got a heap of work to do myself. I don't know about y'all. But we're fixing to sing an invitation song. And if y'all need anything, if y'all ain't loving like you're supposed to, if you're having problems during the week, and you believe in God, and you believe that when you talk to God, if you, the, the Bible says if you believe in Jesus and you love Jesus, Jesus will talk to God for you. If you believe that, don't be bashful. Come up here. Get you, get you some free prayers while we sing.